Hello, my name is Ruth Knudsen, and I'm a Community Involvement Coordinator for the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. I'd like to welcome you to this virtual public meeting regarding EPA's proposed cleanup plan for the Olin facility. If you've been to other EPA public meetings, you can see that we've adjusted our meeting format to help ensure public safety during the ongoing COVID-19 health crisis. We hope that you find this presentation and our outreach methods helpful and informative. This virtual meeting will provide some background information on the Olin facility and the work overseen by EPA. We will also provide you with details about the investigation at the facility and EPA's proposed cleanup plan. EPA issued a document called a Statement of Basis to describe the proposed cleanup plan and gather the public's comments and questions about the plan. After a 60-day public comment period, EPA will provide responses to public questions and comments in a final decision document. There are many ways you can submit your questions or comments to EPA. First, you can submit a comment directly on this website at www.epa.gov forward slash HW corrective action sites forward slash hazardous dash waste dash cleanup dash Olin, dash Corporation, dash East, dash Alton, dash Illinois. You can also find the statement of basis on this website. Next, you can leave a confidential voicemail at 312-886-6595, or you can email me at muhtsun dot r-u-t-h at e-p-a dot g-o-v. Finally, you can mail your written or typed comments to Ruth Mutson at the U.S. EPA, 77 West Jackson Boulevard, 19th Floor, Chicago, Illinois, 60604. We understand that you may have questions regarding the proposed cleanup plan after watching this presentation. We invite you to join EPA representatives during an open question and answer session on June 16th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Dial 312-667-5632 and enter the conference code 840-331-759-POUND when prompted. Once again, that number is 312 667 Five six three two, with the conference code eight four zero three three one seven five nine pound. I will now hand the presentation over to the EPA project manager Zach Sassnow to explain the proposed cleanup plan and provide background information on the Olin facility. The Olin Corporation facility is a 1,247-acre plant in the western part of East Alton, Illinois. The site has been operating since 1892, and in that time has manufactured mostly ammunition, explosives, and copper alloy products like brass. The areas where the most activity takes place are the brass mill, located in the southwest corner of the site, the wastewater treatment plant, located just to the east of the brass mill, and the Materials Reclamation Facility, located northeast of the wastewater plant and brass mill. Some other areas of note that I've marked on this figure are the public shooting range in the northeast of the property, explosive storage bunkers that you see dotted along the eastern part of the property, and a former laboratory in the forested area north of the wastewater plant. The laboratory is no longer used, but historically, waste from this lab were discharged to a small slough, or pond, near the lab. The Resource Conservation and Recovery Act, known as RICRA, was passed by Congress in the 1970s. Through the RICRA Corrective Action Program, facilities that treat, store, or dispose of hazardous waste are required to investigate, control, and clean up spills or releases of hazardous waste into the environment under EPA oversight. The Olin site entered the program when they applied for a hazardous waste permit in 1980, which EPA granted in 1990. This permit had requirements in it for Olin to conduct a RICRA facility investigation. The RICRA facility investigation, or RFI, is typically conducted in multiple phases. Contamination that's identified in the first phase of the RFI is sampled more thoroughly in the next phases, 
until EPA understands the nature and extent of contamination and the risks posed by the contamination. Olin conducted their RFI in two phases, completing and submitting reports to EPA in 1996 and 2006. During this investigation, 30 areas were sampled on the site property. These samples included soil, sediment, groundwater, and surface water samples. On this slide, I have included a figure from Olin's 2006 Phase 2 RFI report. This gives you a general idea of the locations that were investigated during the RFI. Olin also refers to areas of their property as zones. For example, you can see the brass mill area I referred to a few slides ago is located in Zone 1. You'll see these zone references throughout the reports submitted to EPA by Olin. Within these zones, you can see many areas that were investigated during the RFI, highlighted in orange. Many of these are patches of soil where wastes were staged in the past, as well as several sloughs located in the western part of the property. Details on other areas can be found in the Phase 1 and Phase 2 RFI reports on the EPA webpage for the Olin site. EPA and the Illinois Environmental Protection Agency, or IEPA, oversaw several other investigations of the Olin site, at the same time as the RFI that was required by Olin's hazardous waste permit. Since the 1990s, Olin has been sampling groundwater near the Brass Mill and Materials Reclamation Facility to monitor lead impacts to groundwater in these areas. These impacts were caused by some historical staging of contaminated ballistic sand. Ballistic sand is sand used to stop bullets during ammunition testing and can often become contaminated with metals from the ammunition. Olin submits monitoring reports to EPA and IEPA every six months. In 2002, in one building in the Brass Mill area known as Building 433, Olin discovered a leak in some machinery drainage sumps that were releasing lubricating oils into the groundwater beneath the building. Olin installed an oil recovery system in 2004, which includes eight groundwater wells and pumps to remove accumulated oil from these wells. Over time, the oil has decreased through these efforts, very little is observed today. In 2004, Olin was staging sediments removed from a sewer discharge point, known as Outfall 11. It was discovered that the sediments had significant impacts from lead. The sediments were disposed of in a hazardous waste landfill and the soil where the sediments were staged was also disposed of. Olin sampled groundwater in the area for lead until 2013. Also in 2004, a leak was discovered in the sewer near a priming compound manufacturing building, known as building T242, releasing trinitro resorcinol into the groundwater. Olin installed several groundwater wells and sampled them. While there were no significant impacts from the trinitro resorcinol release, Lead was also detected in the area, and Olin continues to sample groundwater annually for lead. EPA has also directed some investigations more recently. In 2018, EPA requested Olin sample the top foot of soil in city-owned property near the site to determine if any off-site impacts from lead existed in the community. Fortunately, no lead impacts above EPA residential human health screening criteria were found. In 2019, EPA requested Olin sample sediments in the parts of the Wood River that pass through their property, as well as in two stormwater and cooling water collection ponds, known as sloughs, that historically had waste discharged into them. No impacts were found in the river. However, high levels of chromium, lead, and mercury were found in the sloughs. These sloughs are addressed as part of the remedy I'll discuss later in the presentation. Also in 2019, EPA requested Olin sample groundwater in the brass mill area to determine if any impacts from perfluorinated alkyl substances, also known as PFAS, existed from a small chrome plating operation in the brass mill. Several PFAS were detected, but none exceeded EPA's health advisory levels. Before discussing the risk evaluation of the corrective action process, I think it is helpful to highlight the areas that are important to that discussion. The boundary of the Olin site here is outlined in yellow. You'll see two areas identified here as ballistic sand staging areas, where Olin samples groundwater from historical disposal of ballistic sand. The Outfall 11 area is located along the East Fork of the Wood River, and Building T242 is located to the northwest of the Outfall 11 area. Building 433 is located in the Brass Mill, and the two contaminated sloughs I mentioned on the previous slide are located just to the northeast of Building 433. The data that is collected during the various investigations is used to inform both a Human Health Risk Assessment, or HHRA, 
and an Ecological Risk Assessment, or ERA. The goal of these risk assessments is to determine whether or not contamination that was discovered during the RFI poses a health risk to people or the environment. As part of the HHRA, future on-site and off-site workers, trespassers, and nearby residents are considered when determining these risks. For the Olin site, no risks to off-site workers or residents were found, but on-site contamination was determined to pose a risk to on-site workers and trespassers. For the ecological risk assessment, it was determined that no unacceptable ecological risk was posed by the site contamination. The human health risks that were determined in the HHRA were present in soil, groundwater, and sediments on the site property. For soils, several metals including antimony, arsenic, cadmium, copper, lead, and mercury are present above industrial worker criteria. Additionally, Dinitrotoluene and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, known as PAHs, are present above these criteria. For site groundwater, lead is present in several areas above EPA's drinking water criteria, known as maximum contaminant levels or MCLs. Vinyl chloride is also present in the materials reclamation facility groundwater. Note that though we're talking about drinking water standards, groundwater at the site is not currently used for drinking water and part of the proposed remedy will prevent the water from being used for drinking water into the future. There is also oil present in the groundwater beneath building 433 that will be addressed by the remedy. There are significant chromium, lead, and mercury impacts in two stormwater collection ponds near the brass mill that would pose a significant risk if they came into contact with a site worker or trespasser. These are also addressed in the final remedy. To address the risks identified in the HHRA, EPA selects a remedy to clean up or otherwise prevent unacceptable exposures to contamination at the site. When selecting a remedy, EPA evaluates various criteria to decide if a remedy is appropriate for the site. The primary criteria, known as remedial threshold criteria, are protecting human health and the environment, achieving cleanup goals, and controlling the sources of contamination. In addition, secondary criteria, known as remedial balancing criteria, are also considered including long-term reliability and effectiveness, reduction of the toxicity, mobility, and volume of waste, short-term effectiveness, implementability, cost, community acceptance, and state agency acceptance. With these criteria in mind, EPA is proposing the following remedy to address risk and contamination at the site. To address soil contamination, EPA is proposing that Olin remove and dispose of the top foot of lead-impacted soil in the ballistic sand staging areas and materials reclamation facility, and replace that soil with a clean cap material. This cap can be made of a variety of materials such as clay, concrete, or asphalt, and will prevent rain from passing through soil in the area and contaminating groundwater. To ensure on-site construction workers are not exposed, EPA is proposing Olin prepare a soil management plan for EPA approval. The soil management plan will outline how to prevent access, excavation, or construction in those areas without additional testing, protective equipment, or EPA oversight. The plan will also address the shooting range and require Olin periodically remove debris from the range to prevent metals from accumulating in the soil. To address the contaminated sediments, EPA is proposing that Olin remove the contaminated sediments from the stormwater collection ponds, or sloughs, near the brass mill. The contamination is present due to dumping of waste material before the 1980s. Olin currently only collects stormwater and cooling water in the ponds. To address potential exposure to contaminated groundwater, EPA is proposing that Olin place a legal restriction on the property's deed that prevents the use of groundwater for drinking water at the site. Olin will also continue to operate the oil recovery system at the Building 433 area until oil is no longer detected, and conduct groundwater monitoring in several areas after the soil cap and sediment removal is completed. Another part of EPA's proposal is to require Olin to demonstrate their financial capability or set aside money for the cleanup. This process, known as financial assurance, ensures Olin is able to pay for the remedy EPA is proposing. EPA will also request Olin prepare a long-term stewardship plan to make sure that EPA's proposed remedy continues to protect human health and the environment into the future. The long-term stewardship plan will require the maintenance and inspection of the CAP and annual reporting to EPA that the CAP and all legal mechanisms put in place for the site remain in effect. The site property deed will be amended to restrict the use of the Olin site property for industrial purposes only, 
and include the soil management plan as a requirement to follow for any future owners of the property. After Olin completes the work in this remedy and the legal mechanisms requiring long-term care are put in place, Olin will have addressed their obligations for their former solid and hazardous waste management units regulated by EPA's RICRA permit and the Illinois EPA. To recap EPA's proposed remedy, Olin will remove sediments from the sloughs northeast of Building 433 and remove and cap soil in the ballistic sand staging areas and MRF. Olin will then sample groundwater for a period of time after removing these materials to ensure the potential for contamination has been reduced. And the entire site property, outlined on this map in yellow, will be restricted to industrial use and groundwater use for drinking will be prohibited. With that, this concludes the technical portion of our presentation, and I will now hand the presentation back to Ruth. Thank you for participating in this virtual public meeting. As mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, there are multiple ways to submit your public comments on this proposed cleanup plan. First, you can submit a comment directly on this website at www.epa.gov forward slash HW corrective action sites forward slash hazardous dash waste dash cleanup dash Olin dash corporation dash East dash Alton dash Illinois. Next, you can leave a confidential voicemail at 312-886-6595. You can also email me at muhtsun dot ruth at epa dot gov, or mail your written or typed statement to Ruth Mutson at the U.S. EPA, seventy seven West Jackson Boulevard, nineteenth floor, Chicago, Illinois six zero six zero four. And of course, if you have any questions or need assistance with submitting a comment, you can contact myself or Zach Sassnow. Thanks again.